David and I um, dated when when I was in when we were in high school, and I was we was probably 14 years old, and um, probably at 15 he started getting on drugs, and my mom and dad found out about that, so that ended. So because I wasn't allowed to see David anymore. But I went to treatment, and it was in '87, and. I was up there and I basically stayed about three months total and I was up there and my mom and dad would come visit on Sundays and you know I was I was very bad up there and I had to be put in a room by myself two different times and and the whole time that he was there I would go by Miss Furby's office just check and see how he was doing and to tell her, to tell her, to tell David that I said hello. So David stayed in Memphis for like three months and he come back in November. And when he got back, he called me and we pretty much got back together. And but my mom and dad would come and visit me on Sundays and almost every Sunday. You know, she would, they would say, mom would say, well, so-and-so, you know, ask about me or so and so. Ask about me. Usually it would be like their friends or, you know, I might have a, one friend every now and then that would ask, but it was very seldom because you didn't hear from nobody up there. It was a lonely place. And she, Mom would always tell me that Jennifer was asking about you once or twice that week. So it was, um, Dad had went to a basketball game. It was the playoffs, and Mom, me and Mom was at home, and she was in the laundry room. And I just walked to the laundry room door, and um, all I could do was cry. And she looked up at me, and she said, Are you pregnant? And I shook my head. And I'm telling you, I, the hurt on her face, it just broke my heart because I knew that I had done this to her. So anyways, later on, Dad come home and um, he asked me what was I gonna do and I told him I didn't know what I was gonna do. The only thing I needed to do was to tell y'all. So that was the longest ride ever up, up to their house. And my mom and dad and me went up there and. I'll never forget Jimmy in, in the rocking chair, about to break the chair, and he was mad, and they was all mad, and it, it was not good vibes in the house, and uh, they asked us what we were gonna do. And we didn't know, I mean, we, was, we was just kids. And I remember them telling Jennifer, or telling me, that I think they might already told Jennifer that she didn't have to, you know, she didn't have to marry me, and, and I didn't have to marry her. They, would take care of the baby. He said that we had done made one mistake. It was no sense in making another one. If we didn't love each other, we shouldn't get married. And that he would take care of me and the baby. So David and I talked, and two weeks later, we got married. And um, there was people saying that we wouldn't be together for six months. They gave us six months. And Everybody wanted us to fail. Everybody just was, well, you know, they, some people delight in that, I think, but they just wanted us to fail. Like most people give us six months. And the odds was against us, but I will never forget that we went to um, a pastor and we got down on our knees and we prayed and asked God to forgive us. 
And in the midst of all of it, God turned something bad into good, and that was actually. Lo and behold, here, you know, here comes the graduation. Well, that riles up a lot of things in old David's mind, and just where he'd already been, and where he knew he wasn't supposed to go to again, but he did. And she went home several times, and back and forth, and a lot of arguing and fighting, and it's wonder we even made it till Ashley was born, much less after that. You have to remember that David and I was kids, and we were fixing to have a kid. And it was tough, but um, the first, I'd say, year was the, probably, was the toughest, but um, we kept going back to the Lord and asking for help. And, and then over the years, um, you can just see how God has worked things out. I'd been, I'd been back doing drugs, and, and it was just, it, it just hit me like a ton of bricks one day that, that I needed to get my priorities in order. Because I still was mine, and, and I needed to be living for her, and it was, it was just a real trying time in my life. Um, there was a lot of arguments that we, we had. Um, it was just that he was, I would be selfish and he, I would want my way and he would want his way and, and that's just a struggle pretty much with every marriage that, at the beginning. And, um, I started thinking about, you know, my salvation. I got to thinking that I, you know, the way I'd have been acting and things, was I really saved? You know, I, I really doubted it. So one day um, we um, said we, was in church and the Lord just moved on us and said that, you know, that we was going to have to put him first. And when we did that, that's when our marriage changed. And as the, as um, she got older, um, then we had Kobe and Colin and that was a big adjustment. And I rededicated my life and I actually, you know, I asked God to come back. I asked God to come into my heart then and I couldn't tell you exactly that day, but I rededicated my life then with Brother Earl. And I knew then that me and, me and Jennifer had to, we had to get God back first in our life. It was hard, and it was, but it was worth it. And when we put God first, is when our marriage turned around. And David is my best friend. We've been married 28 years, and everybody said we would fail, said that everybody give us six months, you know. And, you know, we've been through a lot of adversity, a lot of give and take, but it, it's all been worth it now. I'm David. And I'm Jennifer. And, and we, we are, are free. free.